this is really the big idea I want to push. That is, this ending is our chance to get the main idea, not to repeat everything we said, but to really get the core of that. And those sentences are great examples. All right, let's go on to look at the ending and how we can structure the ending. Structuring the ending is not an easy thing to do because we need to get a lot of things in there, but we also need to keep it simple, keep it clear, and don't use up too much time. I see lots of presentations where people get to the end and their time is over. I think it's very common that we have the bell ringing, ding, ding, and that signals you only have one minute left, and then people panic, oh, I have to hurry, let me uh, jump over here, let me skip this part. I've said this before, and so I'm going to say it again, and that is, you should not run out of time in your presentation. And the way to avoid running out of time is to keep your presentation short. Remember K-I-S-S, -S, right? Keep it short and simple, right? Keep it short and simple. Keep it short. Keep it concise. If you're running out of time, that means it's not short. So you should have enough time to make your ending. But lots of people don't. And why don't they? Because they ran out of time. How they run out of time? They ran out of time by having too many details. This is the number one problem I see for running out of time. Inside the content, they have too many level two, level three ideas, too many details. And when you have too many details, you're going to just run out of time. So let's make sure we have enough time. Once we get to the ending, the presentation should have four basic parts. Let's look at these four basic parts. The first part is to summarize, make a summary of the main points. So this is your level one, maybe a little bit of level two, your main points. You need to be clear and concise, and you need to restate those main points or the one main point. Now here in our, my slide, I always say main points. So it is possible you have more than one main point. You may have two or three, but I always emphasize I like to have one. It's the one you want the audience to remember, to take away. But anyway, you could have a couple or a few main points. That's possible. We want to make sure that you restate these main points clearly. All right, let's look at the next part, the conclusion part. A presentation ending should include these four parts. Number two is the conclusion. In the conclusion, we should be saying what all the main points add up to. This should be leading to a bigger main point, some larger meaning. What's the meaning? Why are we talking about this? Why should I pay attention? Why is this important? Why do I care? That's what the audience is asking. So I've given you the beginning of the presentation, my main point, I said it once. Now I gave you some supporting points inside the content. And now I'm coming back to say it again. And I want to have a conclusion. And the conclusion is saying, why is this main point important? Why is this something I need to remember? After that, we should include the third step, which is implications or expected results. A recommendation or prediction about the future and how the conclusion is relevant to the future. So I guess the way to think about this would be you had your main point, then you had some details, so these are kind of like supporting 
facts. Now you're going to come down, you make your conclusion. What does this mean? And then what about this in the future? How is this useful to me in the future? You have a nice flow there. Right? We have our summary, then our conclusion, then the implications. And implications are going towards the future time. You have to tell the audience, why is this important for them in the future? Or why is this research important for future research? And then, of course, the last part of the four parts is going to be your question time. Question time includes your time for comments also, because some people don't ask questions, they like to make comments, not just questions. But of course it also can include questions, or it can also be a discussion with the audience. So in general, I think the question time is a combination, right? People will say something positive, something negative, they may ask a question, or they may want to have a discussion with you to talk about your research. But that's the question time. Now, of course, the question time differs depending on the inside the company, outside the company, above you, below you. Remember, we had those two questions. Are these people above you or below you or equal to you in the company? And are they from inside your company or from outside your company or organization or research team? Remember? So that question also applies here. Obviously, if someone is in the audience and they're your boss above you, they ask a question. That's a very different question than if someone is from outside your company and not above you. And they had, or a customer, a potential customer, or a non-customer, or an existing customer, or a future customer. These are things we can think about in our question time, and that would make it very different. But let's just cover the generalities, the general approach to this.